Today we will demonstrate experiment number 6 and the name of the experiment is load characteristics of DC shunt and compound generators. We have three objectives today. Our first objective is to experiment the open circuit characteristics of a separately excited DC generator and our second objective is to study the load characteristics of a DC shunt generator and our third objective is to observe and record the behavior of a cumulative compound DC generator under loading conditions. In this experiment, we have four parts. In the first part, we will do some preliminary measurements. As you can see, this is our experimental setup where we have two identical machines. In the left side, we have one machine. In the right side, we have another machine. These machines are known as multifunction machines. They can be used as a motor or a generator. In our today's experiment, we are using the left side machine as a motor and the right side machine as a generator. So the motor will be working as a driver or prime mover for the rotor of the generator. And in between, we have a coupling device that couple the rotors of these two machines, as well as we have a TACO generator to measure the speed of these two devices. Now we will record the nameplate data of the multifunction machines. Here is the nameplate. The first table represents motor nameplate data and the second table represents generator nameplate data. As you can see, all the values are same as the machines are identical to each other. This table represents the generator winding resistances. Here is the demonstration where we have measured the winding resistances between E1 and E2 using a multimeter. Okay, this experiment is about uh, load characteristics of uh, DC shunt, com shunt and compound uh, generators. Uh, let me first uh, introduce the equipment that we're going to use uh, during the course of this exper experiment. Uh, we we're going to use uh, two DC machines. One is the actual driver and the other one is the generator. The driver or the prime mover is supposed to be, it's a DC motor and the generator is driven by this prime mover. In between we have the speedometer and the speedometer is basically it's nothing like a small DC generator which take actually uh, the uh, which takes the speed which measures the speed based on the generated voltage across this uh, little uh, little sort of uh, speedometer uh, for speed measurements. Uh, so these are the major equipment that we're going to use so we're going to have to use the supply uh, voltage, uh, variable supply voltage uh, that has a 10 ampere current rating and this voltage the it varies between uh, 40 and uh, 200, uh, 200 uh, volt, uh, 250 volt DC where we can control the voltage uh, out of this cursor. Great. Next thing is, uh, so we're going to have to conduct uh, several experiments the first one is to drive the open circuit characteristic of a DC generator and the second one is going to be to, to uh, uh, draw the growth characteristics of a DC uh, shunt uh, generator. So basically these are uh, the first two experiments and then we ended up with cumulative compound DC generator. Uh, let me go through the specific characteristics of these uh, of these devices. So this is the driver or the prime mover. The prime mover has its own characteristics and the name plate of the machine is supposed actually to uh, to reflect the characteristics of the of the of the DC motor. Now the characteristic is uh, nominal voltage, uh, nominal armature current and for series winding and uh, nominal current for field uh, for shunt field or, or field winding then uh, the nominal speed is written here and then the nominal power so if you if you focus a little bit on this that that's this is actually the name plate where we have all this data related to the machine similarly uh, the name plate here reflects the characteristics of the generator and these characteristics are are the first thing to be recorded then here these are actually the main components or the main parts that are going to make the circuitry. Uh, for instance, if you go to figure one in page 45, now figure one uh, demonstrates the, uh, the driver, which is basically the motor that's going to run the generator. And uh, as, as you see in the, in the circuits, we have a shunt, shunt winding, if you focus here. 
the shunt winding, which is E1, E2, and then you have the uh, armature winding, which is basically C1, C2 plus B1, B2. Now, if you, if you look at this, these windings are actually uh, A1 and A2 are the armature representing the armature points. Uh, these are actually the two, co the two points that are connected in the circuits. Uh, B1, uh, the, these, these two are actually reflected here. Uh, these two points are reflected here uh, to show the series, the armature winding connected in circuit. Uh, also, C1 and C2 would, would act with it in series in, in figure one. And you have E1 and E2. E1 and E2 is supposed to be actually to simulate the, uh, the, simulate the uh, shunt uh, points or the shunt, shield, shunt field winding. We have something similar here that's going to reflect the armature, which is supposed to be here. This is multifunction. B1, Function. B2, uh, these are actually different fields. Uh, these windings are actually uh, used to uh, to connect different sorts of combination of, uh, of generators, whether it is shunt generator, compound generator, differential compound, or series, series, uh, series, series, series connected generator, or additive compound, depending on the design. In part B of this experiment, we will study the generator open circuit characteristics. Here is the circuit diagram. As you can see, the excitation of this generator E1 and E2 are connected to an external power supply. That's why we call it separately excited DC generator. We have made the connection for the first figure, which is for the open circuit characteristic of a separately excited uh, DC uh, generator. You know, this is the prime mover side. So we have connected the armature and the uh, and and the and the other windings. Okay. Similarly, we have the connection strictly as per the uh, circuit diagram given. You are going to connect from the from the supply, and you are going to connect the armature with the other series winding. Okay, to limit the current, as explained earlier, and uh, this is how the windings will be connected. It's very simple. I mean, uh, just follow the the instructions. Okay, now we have two power supply as I said that this is a separately excited DC generator. So there is a power supply for the motor side which is 40 to 250 volt variable DC power supply. So this is connected to the motor side. Okay, and then the other DC power supply 0 to 250 volt 2.5 ampere. This will be connected to the generator for the separate uh, separate excitation. Okay, uh, the, we have made the you know, of course, you know that the positive of the DC will go to the fuse and then it gets connected to the other part of the circuit. Negative, you can connect directly. So all these amplifier settings and connections to the CASI is, is already made. If you look at uh, the machine, okay, uh, you see these two terminals is to measure the rotor speed and they are connected to CASI UA2 the sensor CASI UA2 channel okay this will directly give you the give you the speed okay so the connection is straightforward you have two supply okay and then you connect the windings you connect the amplifier with the CASI the settings on the on the on the CASI is already made remember we are going to uh, measure the open circuit voltage we are going to measure the open circuit voltage and the field current and the rotor speed okay the procedure, if you talk of the procedure, is very simple. We will switch on first the motor supply, which is this one here, okay? And we will increase the voltage until we get a rotor speed of 2040, which is the rated RPM of the DC motor. So we just started, we just switched on the voltage and we are increasing the voltage of, and we look at the RPM there. If you look at the RPM on the monitor, it is increasing. We want to make it to the rated value, which is 2000. Motor running at uh, 1990 RPM. Okay. If you see, if you look at the current and the, uh, the, the voltage, there is no voltage build up yet. Okay. Remember, we are, we are trying to excite the field separately by using another voltage so DC source. So there is not, and we have not given the that excitation so there is no voltage buildup that's why it shows zero the moment we switch on the dc power supply you will see the voltage build up will be there now we are going to switch on 
Now we will increase the field current. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay, now let's take this reading. 0.025 then further okay we take this okay now you see we are increasing the field and we are trying to see the voltage we have taken uh, the full set of reading starting from the from the zero all the way up to 0.32 to see the voltage build up x axis is the field current and y axis is the no load voltage and you can see the curve normally it should saturate you know if we, if we are able to increase uh, the excitation further it's going to get flat you know to show the saturation but unfortunately with this setup we cannot get that so this will, this is the first half of the experiment for the open circuit characteristic in part c of this experiment we will study the load characteristics of a dc shunt generator here is the circuit diagram. As you can see, the excitation E1 and E2 of this generator is in parallel with the generator itself. So we call it DC shunt generator. Additionally, this excitation system is not connected to any external power supply. That's why this circuit is also known as self-excited DC shunt generator. In part D, we'll study the load characteristics of a cumulative compound DC generator. Here is the circuit diagram. So the only difference of this circuit diagram with the previous one is the series winding D1 and D2. This series winding makes the DC shunt generator as a cumulative compound DC generator. Now we are going to study the load characteristic of a DC shunt generator, meaning we are going to plot the load current versus the load voltage at different value of the resistance. Okay, at the start we have to keep R at 100%. We have still not started the machine. Remember, we are using one power supply which is for the prime mover, which is the motor. So we are going to switch this on and increase the power supply so that we get the rated speed. Let's see how much we can get. Ideally, we should go to 2040 RPM. And we have to keep this speed uh, constant for all the reading. So we can go up to 1945 RPM. Now remember R is at 100%. So we will, R is at 100%. So this is the load. Okay. We have already taken the no load voltage. Which is if you just open the connection to the load. And the voltage that you get is the no load voltage. Now the first reading is at 100% R and we are going to vary this. So now we will do the same for the DC cumulative compound generator. So what we have to do, we have to actually rebuild the connection for a DC cumulative compound generator as well as we will do the measurement in the same file. So how we will do the measurement in the same file, there is an option in Casey. Uh, actually we did not expose to this option for our previous experiment, so this is new today. So if you come uh, to the settings and double click here, you will see that there is something called append new measurement series. So now if you append this new measurement series, then uh, you can do the next experiment and the next experiment measurement will come here after this measurement so we can compare them now this is the connection for DC cumulative compound generator uh, here is the connection we, we change the connection to make it this is a cumulative shunt compound generator so here as you can see that we have started for uh, from 205 for the D, uh, DC shunt generator but here the voltage buildup is much more bigger than that one. But to compare it, we will start from 205, uh, from the same same point. So how we can do it? We can reduce the voltage for the uh, motor a little bit and we can get uh, 205. Uh, that will help us to compare their characteristics. Step 22 of our manual are asking us to record the no load voltage. So we simply disconnected the load from the circuit and we have recorded this no load voltage for DC shunt generator. 
If you now plot voltage versus current measurements as recorded for shunt and compound generators, you will have a similar graph. The contributors of this video are Dr. Muhammad Abidu, Dr. Shukri Ahmed, Engineer Firuz Ahmed, and Dr. Muhammad Shafiullah.